Smash Ultimate Spirit Battles are an incredibly unique way to represent characters from the game's several different franchises that couldn't quite make the roster. Each of these battles use the existing roster, stages, items, and more to create battles that truly feel like the character they're meant to represent. However, even with over 1,500 spirits, there are still several characters that go completely unrepresented here. In the first episode of the series, I created spirit battles for all the mobs in Minecraft, which you all seem to really enjoy. It was one of my favorite videos at the time, so I've been really looking forward to making a sequel, but the question was, what series do I do next? Well, luckily, I didn't need to wait long for my answer, as one of the first and most popular comments on the video was to make a spirit battle for every single Pokemon. To say the least, there are a lot of Pokemon, and also I've sort of fallen out of the series after Generation 7. I used to be a huge fan of the Pokemon series, though. Play the clip of Baby Me completing the Pokedex. Right now, you think... Oh! It's got a crown! Look at that! So I thought that I did still have enough knowledge to at least tackle this franchise a little bit, however, not all at once. Since there's almost as many Pokemon as there are spirits, I thought that it would be best to split up each of these videos into a different generation, meaning we're starting off with the original and most iconic 151 Pokemon. For those of you that didn't see the original video, I'll be going over each and every Pokemon and discussing which character I think best represents them, which stage I think they'd take place on, and of course, what special conditions they may have. This could be anything from the floor being lava, to the opponent only using certain moves, to the items only being pitfalls, and so on. I should also warn that my footage on screen will always be 100% accurate to what I'm saying. I'll get as close as I can, but there are just some conditions I can't replicate, so just use your imaginations. So with all that said, if you enjoyed this video and want me to cover future generations, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If I'm able to hit 100k by the end of 2022, I'm going to make a video ranking every single moon of Mario Odyssey, so hopefully that gives you all a little bit more incentive to do so. But anyways, let's jump right into making spirit battles for all 151 original Pokemon for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Alright, I lied, there are a few more things. Since Pokemon is one of Smash's most prominent series, in fact just barely having the most spirits out of any franchise, many of the original 151 already have battles. On top of that, the Generation 1 Pokemon are also the most represented on the Smash roster, with 6 of the 10 playable Pokemon coming from there. That means I won't need to create battles for 48 of the 151 Pokemon since they already have them. I will still have to create battles for their evolutions if they aren't in the game though, so don't worry about that. I'm also not going to cover Alolan forms, Mega Evolutions, or Pokemon part of the same evolution line that were added in later in this video, as I'll cover those when I get to the gen they were introduced. This video is only for the original 151 Pokemon introduced in red, green, blue, and yellow. Alright, I think I've covered all the possible things I could get called out for in the comments. Let's look at Pokemon number one, Bulbasaur. Being the pre-evolution to a Pokemon that's already on the roster makes this pretty easy, so Ivysaur will obviously be the fighter of choice here. He's also going to be made slightly smaller to more closely fit Bulbasaur's size. The Spirit Battle in Smash gives several different size options, way more than the mushrooms will allow for, so just imagine the most fitting size for each of these Pokemon I mentioned in the video. Ivysaur will also be in his third all since I believe that's the closest to Bulbasaur color-wise. This would take place on the battlefield version of Garden of Hope, the same place the Venusaur battle takes place, and there would be a poison floor which will inflict damage whenever you stand on it. This would be a novice, or a one-star spirit. Yeah, this one is basically just a copy of the Venusaur spirit with only a size change. This will be the case for many of the Pokemon in the same evolution line since many of them retain the same general look, however, there are quite a few that have major differences, so don't worry about that. Charmeleon is next, and would you believe it, this is basically the same as the Charmander Spirit Battle. This will feature Charizard in his second alt, as the color scheme is meant to reference Charmeleon. The Charmander fight also uses this alt as well, which I think is kinda dumb. The current spirits never use a fighter's default appearance, however, I'm not going to be following that restriction for this video. But yeah, the Charizard will be about the same size as the Charmander fighter, and it'd be on Battlefield Great Cave Offensive with the Lava Floor. I'm not entirely sure why this was Charmander stage, but I thought it was best to be consistent. This would be an advanced spirit. Unlike the others we've covered so far, this is an evolution rather than a pre-evolution to the fighter included in Smash, meaning that Squirtle should be made slightly bigger here instead. Everything else is basically just stolen from the Blastoise fight, as this takes place on Delfino Plaza, however, instead of spawning with a Super Scope, he just won't. War Turtle doesn't have the blasters that Blastoise does, so there's no reason for him to have this. Not like Blastoise uses them anyways. This would be another advanced spirit. Well, we've finally escaped our starter Pokemon. Feeling comfortable? Well, now it's time we have to cover Pokemon that don't have part of their evolution line included in the roster, which means I'm going to have to face the one thing I hate the most, originality. First up is Caterpie. While Metapod has a spirit, that won't help us much here as the two Pokemon do look quite different but I decided to go with Yoshi in his main alt anyway. Yoshi's design is definitely the closest to this sort of worm design, so he'll be showing up quite a few times in this video. Yoshi will of course be made small because I don't think Caterpie is that big. 
The only condition for this fight is that you'll be made slightly slower, which is a reference to the move String Shot. Now the thing is about Pokemon is that many of them share the same moves as one another, so I'm only going to be referencing moves for a Pokemon if they have a distinct reason for me to. This would take place on Omega Green Greens because Grass, and this would be a Novice Spirit. As I said, Metapod has a Spirit Battle, which means we could jump straight to Butterfree. I was really unsure who to use as a fighter here, but I whittled it down to either Pit or Bayonetta. Pit because he has the wings, and Bayo because she can have Butterfly Wings when she uses her Double Jump. In the end, I felt Pit fit a bit better, but Bayo still works here. I gave him his fifth ult, and this will actually be our first battle to have a specific AI change made to the opponent. In this case, he'll prefer jumping because, you know, Butterfree likes to fly. This would also be on Green Greens, and it'd be an Advanced Spirit. That brings us to our first evolution line that is completely unrepresented with spirits being the Weedle family. Unfortunately, they're pretty similar to Caterpie. Weedle would also be a small Yoshi, but this time yellow. Instead of making you slow, the condition here is that the floor is poison, since Weedle is one of the first poison Pokemon you'll encounter in the game. Unless you're one of those nerds who picked Bulbasaur. The stage would be Battlefield Dreamland, and this would be a Novice Spirit. Kakuna, we can basically just copy the Metapod Spirit Battle. This would be a yellow Yoshi that is hard to launch, however, it won't attack much. This is of course in reference to Metapod and Kakuna's infamous Harden move. Yoshi would also be gold here instead of metal, to better fit Kakuna's color scheme. Finally, the floor will slow you down like in Metapod's battle. This is once again on Battlefield Dreamland and is a Novice Spirit. Like in the Caterpie line, the final fighter will be someone completely different. Beedrill was really easy to come up with though, as Yellow Ridley is really the only character that fits perfectly. While he'll be able to use other attacks, he'll prefer using Forward Air and Skewer as they use his Stinger, which is obviously a distinguishing feature of Beedrill. Speaking of bees, Ridley will spawn with a Beehive and it will also be the only item spawnable. The floor is once again flipped back to being poison, as Beedrill is obviously a poison type. The stage is the same as the last two, and this would be an advanced battle. And now we're back to Pokemon with Spirit Battles, as Pidgey has one where it's already represented by Pit. Considering Pidgey's evolutions, Pidgeotto and Pidgeot don't really change much design-wise, their battles will almost be exactly the same. The only real change will be the size of the Pit in the stage, as I think a grassy stage would fit much better than Saffron City here. So Pidgeotto would be a slightly small yellow Pit that prefers jumping on Omega Yoshi's Island with high winds, and Pidgeot would be the exact same but with a normal-sized Pit. Pidgeotto is a novice, and Pidgeot is an advanced Spirit. That brings us to our first really unique evolution line with Rattata. Well, Weedle was original, it was pretty similar to Caterpie, however Rattata and Raticate don't really have an equivalent. I decided a small Sonic using his second Dalt fit best here. They both have a pretty similar color scheme and they're both rodents. I also decided to give Sonic a bit more speed to reference Rattata's runaway ability. In the games, this lets you run away from any battle 100% of the time. Abilities are going to be one of the main ways I reference Pokemon throughout the video as they're much more personal than moves are. There are a lot less abilities than there are moves, so this is just a better reference point in general. The stage will be a Mega Windy Hill Zone because Grass, and this would be a Novice. Raticate will become a completely different fighter, in this case Diddy Kong. I chose him because both of them have tails featured pretty prominently in their design, so I thought he fit best. Diddy will be made big though, and also receive the speed buff as it shares the same ability as Rattata. My brother also thought it'd be a good idea to pair him up with two small purple Sonics, as he claims that Raticates are usually with Rattatas. I mean, it makes the spirit battle more unique, so why not? This would be on the same stage and would be an advanced spirit. Spearow is another bird Pokemon, but instead of using Pits, I'm going to be using Dark Pits, since I always saw the Spearow line as the sort of dark alternative to the Pidgey line. Dark Pits' third all fits the color scheme best, and he'll also be made small. I also think making this a horde battle would fit, and the Dark Pits would prefer jumping and aerials to represent flying. The stage would also be Gar Plane in its nighttime variants, as that would reference the dark atmosphere of the first episode of the anime when Spearow are going to attack Ash and Pikachu. Finally, this would be a Novice Spirit. Fira would be very similar, though it would be a big dark pit rather than small, and there would only be one this time around. Strong Wind would also be put there to make it more difficult. Everything else would remain the same, making this an advanced spirit. Arbuck got a spirit, but its pre-evolution Ekans did not. They used Ridley in that battle, but I don't really think he'd fit for Ekans, since Ekans are usually more friendly looking than Arbok. So instead, I went with a small purple Yoshi. The floor would be made of poison due to Ekans poison typing, and the stage would be Yoshi's Island to fit Arbok's battle. This would be a novice spirit. Raichu is our first Pokemon to only be represented by its Alolan form in Smash, which means we're going to have to make a redone version for this video. Obviously, Raichu is not only Pikachu, but Pichu on the roster to represent him, but Pikachu obviously fits a bit better. Pika's darkest alt is the one wearing Red's cap, so I chose that one, and he'd of course be big as well. I also thought Red's hat fits best as it would represent this being the Kanto Raichu, and the Alolan one uses the Alolan Pikachu. The stage would be Pokemon Stadium 2 during its electric transformation, as stages can be frozen in certain states during spirit battles. The floor will also be electrified, which will you if you step on it. I completely forgot this condition existed, so that'll be pretty helpful later on. This would be an advanced spirit. Sand Shrew already has a spirit battle, so that makes Sand Slash pretty easy. Yellow Bowser will be the fighter, but he'll be normally sized instead of being small. Claw attacks like Forward Air and Down Smash will have increased power due to Sand Slash's huge claws. Pitfalls are also the only item, and this would take place on Battlefield Mushroomy Kingdom. This would be an advanced spirit. 
Now, the Nidoran lines were two I was fearing, as they represent six total Pokemon, and they are built completely different from pretty much every character on Smash's roster. I decided to represent Nidoran with Sonic, the third ult for the female and the second one for the male. Since these lines are so closely connected, I thought they should be combined with the opposite gender counterparts like how the three legendary birds are all in one spirit battle. The Sonics would all be made small, and the stage would be the Savannah variant of the Minecraft world stage. I chose that because it's the closest thing to the Safari Zone, so if any Pokemon is associated with it, that'll likely be its stage. That's not the only place these Pokemon can be found, but I just didn't want to pick another random grass stage. This would be a Novice Spirit. Nidorina and Nidorino would be the same, but the Sonics would be normally sized, and the battle would be advanced. <laughs> Nido Queen and Nido King actually change it up a little as instead of being Sonic, Bowser was my choice since their final evolutions are much tougher. Blue Bowser fits perfectly for Nido Queen. Sadly, there's not really a purple Bowser for Nido King, so Red Bowser was the next best thing. The floor would also be made poison this time to make this distinctly more difficult than the last two battles. This would once again be on the Savannah variant of the Minecraft world stage, and this is our first Ace Spirit of the video. Clefairy has a spirit battle, so Clefable will basically be the same thing, but big. The final will be a big Jigglypuff in her third alt, as the bow kind of makes her look a bit more like Clefable. This would also take place on Magicant, with the screen occasionally flipping. I also decided to make the Jigglypuff take less damage from Magic Attacks, which is based on Clefable's Magic Guard ability. As the name implies, in the Pokemon games, Magic Guard will make the Pokemon not be able to take indirect damage. This would be an advanced spirit. Vulpix got not one, but two spirit battles due to its Alolan form, but poor Ninetales didn't get anything. Fox in its 7th ult fits best, as Ninetales is literally called the Fox Pokemon, so it wouldn't really make much sense for me to use anyone else. I was considering using 9 Foxes, but I thought that'd be a bit too much. Fox will prefer to use Tail Attacks like his Up Air, Down Tilt, and so on, along with his Up Special since that's his only fire move. Speaking of which, fire attacks will deal less damage to Fox as a reference to the Flash Fire ability, which makes the Pokemon immune to fire attacks. It also boosts their ability to use fire, so Fox here will have increased damage to any fire attacks it uses. Fire items will also be the only ones that can spawn in order to work with that, which includes items like the Fire Bar, Curry, and so on. Fox will also spawn with a Vulpix Pokeball, and the stage would be the same as the Vulpix Spirit Battle being Saffron City. This is an advanced spirit. Wigglytuff is the evolution to Jigglypuff, who's already on the roster, so the fight here is easy. Just make it a big Jigglypuff and throw it onto a Mega Magikant and you're done. That's another advanced spirit. Zubat is infamous for being one of the most annoying Pokemon, so this would have to be a horde battle. Oh yeah, Meta Knight is the character I chose here because he has bat wings. He'll prefer jumping and they'll be made small. The default costume also fits the color scheme best. There isn't really a good cave stage in Smash, shut up great cave offensive does not count, so I chose Spear Pillar. This would be a novice. Golbat would also be Meta Knight, but this time normally sized. Since Golbat isn't nearly as common as Zubats are, this would only be against one Meta Knight. The stage would be the same, and this would be an advanced spirit. For the Oddish Lion, I was originally going to use Blue Kirby, but Kirby is used a lot more later on in this video, so I decided to stick with Ivysaur here. Ivy's third all fits Oddish best, so the small version of that would be used here. Now to reference the plant on Oddish's head, I think it makes sense if a lipstick was attached to you during the fight. This will deal continuous damage over time, and I think the lipstick will also be the only spawnable item along with the healing sprout. The stage would be Omega Distant Planet, and this would be a Novice Spirit. Gloom is also Ivysaur, though since his top is red this time around, Ivysaur's fourth ult is used here. This Ivysaur would be normally sized and also heal over time. Whenever I use this line in the games, it's always for their moves that steal the opponent's HP and heal themselves instead, like Mega and Giga Drain. I didn't give this to Otters since I wanted to make Gloom and Vileplume a bit more unique. Speaking of, not only do you still have the lipstick attached, but the whole stage is covered in Poison Fog. This is like the Poison Floor condition, but it covers the entire stage instead. That was another one I completely forgot about. I've always associated these guys with moves like Poison Powder and Toxic as well, so I thought it fit. The stage and item rules would be the same, and this would be an advanced spirit. Finally, Vileplume would be the exact same, but this time Ivysaur would be made big, which makes this another ace spirit due to just how many conditions are present here. Paris and Parasect have always been really weird Pokemon. Their designs are also completely different from anything else in Smash. My brother did threaten me to use an orange Dark Samus for them, since Dark Samus is apparently some sort of bug, so yeah, blame him if there's a better choice. The Dark Samus would of course have to be small to fit Paris' size as well. Now the most iconic part of Paris are the mushrooms attached to their head, which unfortunately means all fighters have the rambling mushrooms applied to them as it just makes way too much sense. It also sort of fits how the mushrooms eventually take over when it evolves to Parasect. Since these two are referred to as the mushroom Pokemon as well, mushroom items are the only ones that can spawn, so the super, poison, and rambling mushrooms. Finally, the stage would be Lumio City as the city is based on Paris. Fine, Omega Distant Planet will be the stage, but not just because it's grassy, as the stage actually has some pretty prominent mushrooms in its design. Paris would be a novice spirit. 
Parasect would be the exact same thing, but Dark Samus would be made big this time, making it an advanced spirit. Venonat and Venomoth have always been pretty forgettable, especially with how much more iconic the two main bug types in this gen are. Kirby and his 8th thought is perfect for representing Venonat, and the stage will be... uh... that one. There's really nothing else special about this guy, so it'll be a novice. Venomoth doesn't really fit with Kirby, so White Bayonetta was my choice. If you remember all the way back in the Butterfree segment, I said Bayo has butterfly wings, but personally, I think she fits better as a mom. The only other condition for this fight is that Bayo will prefer jumping, otherwise it's on the same stage and is an advanced spirit. Diglett was incredibly easy since Doug Trio already has a battle. All we have to do is really just make you fight only one Kirby instead of the three. This would be on the ground variant of Pokemon Stadium 2, since the Doug Trio is in the background and earthquakes would occasionally occur to trip you. I did add one condition to this fight, and it was that pitfalls are the only item, as when you get buried, it kind of makes you look like a Diglett. This would be a novice. Our next Pokemon is Persian, whose pre-evolution Meowth already has a spirit battle. Let me just say that Golden Plains as a stage absolutely fits them perfectly, so that'll be the stage here as well. While Isabelle works for Meowth's shorter build, I think Incineroar is going to be my choice for Persian. Now Incineroar is known for being the slowest character in Smash, so he'll be given a speed boost to match Persian's fast speed stat. The last two conditions is that Incineroar will be made gold just like Isabelle, and he'd spawn with a Meowth Pokeball. There would also only be one as opposed to the two in Meowth, so this would be an advanced spirit. Psyduck already has a spirit, so Golduck is next. Due to his much slender design, I'm going to go with Greninja here instead of Squirtle like in Psyduck's battle. The Greninja will also have increased speed to reference the Swift Swim ability, which basically lets you move fast during the rain. The screen will also flip every so often like in Psyduck's battle to reference its psychic typing. Finally, this would take place on Great Bay because water and it would be an advanced spirit. Mankey was incredibly easy to come up with a fighter for, as if you just replace one letter in its name, you will get Monkey, and there's only one Monkey in Smash that fits, and that's Diddy Kong. There's sadly not really a good white alt, so he'll just be in a second. The stage would be Boxing Ring in reference to where Ash left his primate during the anime, and it'd also be a unique stage that isn't just chosen for its grass. This would be an advanced spirit, as its AI will be made much more aggressive than most. Primate was also easy to come up with a fighter for, as if you remove the first five letters, and replace what's left with Donkey Kong, we get Donkey Kong. Luckily, his sixth alt fits primate color scheme very well here, making him perfect for this role. This Donkey Kong will also prefer to throw out punches like Jab and Neutral Special in order to reference Primeape's prominent association with punches. The stage would remain the same and this would be an Ace Spirit. Arcanine already has a spirit battle, so Growlithe will basically be the same. Duck Hunt and his 6th ult on Battlefield Guard Plains with the floor being lava. The only change is that Duck Hunt is normally sized instead of being big and he'd be a novice spirit. The Poliwag line is one that I'm pretty surprised never showed up on the spirit roster. Despite being frogs, I don't really think Greninja fits their design very well, so I'm going to be choosing someone else. For Poliwag, I went with a small blue Kirby. He'd periodically gain speed due to the Swift Swim ability, and the stage would be Tortimer's Island. This would be a novice. Now you all may expect Poliwhirl to be another Kirby, however I think Pac-Man actually fits slightly better. While the colors aren't the same because Namco doesn't know how to make Pac-Man a different color, his shape and especially his gloves just fit too closely with Poliwhirl. This Pac-Man will also have increased speed and will prefer to use Jab and Up Tilt to make use of those gloves I mentioned before. This is on the same stage and would be an advanced spirit. Finally, Poliwrath's only change from the last battle is that Pac-Man is now big and its punches have increased power, making it an ace spirit. Abra is already a Pokeball Pokemon, so obviously it has a spirit battle, and luckily it's pretty compatible with the rest of the line. For Kadabra, the fighter would also be a yellow Mewtwo, though it would be normally sized instead of being small. Its psychic moves would have increased power, due to this line basically being the face of psychic type Pokemon besides, well, Mewtwo himself. This would also take place on Saffron City, and the Mewtwo would spawn with an Abra Pokeball, making this an advanced spirit. Everything from that battle applies to Alakazam as well, but he would also be given increased speed due to Alakazam's high speed stat and he'd be resistant to other magic attacks to reference the magic guard ability. This would be another Ace Spirit. Now you all may have noticed that I didn't include anything to reference their signature spoons. I really could not think of anything that fit well here. Shovels like Villagers and Steve's maybe, but those two fighters don't look anything close to Kadabra or Alakazam. None of the items really look like spoons either, so if you have any good ways to reference these, let me know in the comments. The Machop line already has Machamp representing them, however I ended up using a different fighter for each Pokemon in this line. Since Machop is a lot smaller than the others, I chose Me Brawler to represent it. The Me Brawler would prefer punches like his forward smash, and this would take place on Wrecking Crew to stay in line with Machamp. This is a novice. Now Captain Falcon definitely works for Machoke, however I thought it'd be nice to use Blue Kazia instead. He's shirtless like Machoke, and I thought this video could use a bit more DLC representation. Like the last battle, punch attacks like his forward smash are preferred, but they'll also have increased power this time around. This is on the same stage and is an advanced spirit. Bellsprout was just made to be represented by Piranha Plant, specifically by his third ult. It'd also be made small and the stage would be Omega Distant Planet. This is a novice. Now you all may not agree with me here, but I decided to temporarily swap Plant out with a yellow Kirby for Weepin' Bell, since his large mouth just fits Kirby's inhale way too well.
This is on the same stage and will also be a novice spirit since there isn't really much of a difference here. Finally, Victory Bell jumps back to a yellow piranha plant as he's much more vicious than Weepin' Bell and also faces upward like the classic piranha plants. This guy will also be made big to better fit Victory Bell's size and he'll prefer using mouth attacks to fit Victory Bell always trying to eat things. Side Special will also be used often to reference Poison Powder. Speaking of poison, the floor will also be made out of it. This is once again on a mega distant planet, and this is an advanced spirit. Yeah. Tentacool could really only be represented by Inkling. Light Blue- oh, I'm sorry, Nerd Inkling works here. Cry harder comments. This would also be a horde battle due to just how common these guys are in water locations, and the floor would be made out of poison to reference their poison typing. The Inklings would all be made floaty to represent water physics. The stage will be on Delfino Plaza, and this is a novice. Tentacruel would be the same, but there's only one. Not only would this guy be big though, he'd be giant as a reference to the giant Tentacruel in the anime. That was actually the reason I chose Delfino Plaza, as it's a town next to the water, just like in that episode. Other than that, the conditions remain the same, making this an advanced battle. Geodude already has a spirit, so we could basically carry over a lot of that for its evolution. Graveler will be represented by two big gray Kirbys that prefer using down special. They'll also be hard to launch due to them being, well, rocks. This would also take place on the ground variant of Pokemon Stadium 2, with the only items being the bombs. This would be an advanced spirit. Golem would be the same, but instead of using two Kirbys, it'd be one big K. Roll due to the change in Golem's face. Though this wouldn't spam down special because K. Roll's move isn't rock related. This would be an advanced spirit as well. Rapid Ash luckily has a spirit battle, which means we could basically do the same thing we did with Growlithe earlier for Ponyta, and basically just make a smaller version of its evolution. So this would be a small Charizard in its fifth alt on the Battlefield version of the Mushroom Kingdom U stage. It would prefer using neutral special and would have increased speed. This would be a novice spirit. Slowpoke got a spirit. In fact, he's actually a master spirit in the game, which is kind of strange, but good for him, I guess. Slowbro is really similar to its pre-evolution, so the fight will almost be the same, being against a slow pink Luigi on Mushroom Kingdom 2 while you have reverse controls and are also slowed. The only change this time around is that the blue and green shells are the only items, which of course refers to the cloister attached to its tail. This would be an advanced spirit. Magneton got a spirit, and since he's basically just three Magnemites mashed together, we could basically just remove two of the fighters from the Magneton fight. So this would be a stamina battle against White Metal Pac-Man on the electric transformation of Pokemon Stadium 2. This especially fits as their evolution Magnezone, which was introduced in Gen 4, floats around in the background. This would be a novice. Doduo is obviously represented by Brown Falco since they're both birds. Well, I guess I shouldn't say obviously since I made the other birds wrecked by the pits. I mean, they could be birds as well, you never know. But anyway, there would be two of them to represent the two heads of the Pokemon. I also decided to give them high gravity, or in other words, they fall faster due to Doduo's lack of wings. Since these guys are another Safari Zone Pokemon, this will take place on the Savannah variant of the Minecraft World stage. This is a novice spirit. Dodrio is the exact same thing, but with one extra Falco. Shoutouts to anyone who can guess why. Okay, I did make them all faster since Dodrio does have a pretty solid speed stat. This would be an advanced spirit. Seal is one of the most forgettable Pokemon in the first generation, but luckily a spirit battle wasn't too hard to make. Duck Hunt fits the design of Seal pretty well, especially in its white ult. This would be a novice. Dugong is basically just the same thing except bigger, so the same rules would apply, but Duck Hunt would just be made larger. I also think making Freezy's the only item would fit Dugong's new ice typing. Also, I always thought Seal was an ice type, but apparently he isn't. Only Dugong is. Learn something new every day, I guess. Anyways, this is an advanced spirit. Grimer and Muck were two Pokemon that I was really unsure who could represent them. I mean, there aren't really any purple blobs on the Smash roster. That was until I remembered the Inkling's Dark Purple ult, which combined with the ink fits perfectly for these two. Grimer would be represented by a horde of small dark purple Inklings that only use ink attacks. They would also move slow since the Pokemon have abysmal speed stats. The floor would be poisoned to represent the Grimer residue that they probably track behind them. Finally, the stage would be Mario Bros since that's the closest thing to being a sewer in the game. This would be a novice battle. Muck would be the same thing, but instead of a bunch of small purple Inklings, it'd just be one large one. You would also be slowed due to all the gunk in the area as well, just to make this a little bit more unique. This is an advanced spirit. Originally for Shelter, I was going to use Bowser since he's the only fighter with a shell. But then I remembered Squirtle exists. He'll prefer using side special since that's obviously the move he uses with his shell. The only item would once again be the blue and green shell just like in Slowbro's battle. This will take place on Tornamer's Island and would be a novice. Now with Cloyster's more spiky shell, the blue Bowser actually fits here. Bowser's shell move is his up special though, so he'll spam that instead. He'll also be harder to launch due to, once again, the strong shell. Finally, the rest of the rules are the same as the last one, shells being the only items in the stage's Tornamer's Island. This would be an advanced spirit. Now we've got the only Gen 1 ghost line, the Ghastly line. Ghastly itself obviously fits with Kirby's last ult. The color scheme is almost too perfect. This Kirby will be floaty and jump a lot since Ghastly doesn't really like being on the ground. Probably because it can't be on the ground. It'll also occasionally turn invisible because it's a spooky ghost. Woo! <laughs> this would be on Battlefield Luigi's Mansion and would be a novice. Hunter is the same thing, except Kirby is replaced by a purple Donkey Kong. This is an advanced spirit. Gengar, of course, already has one, so Onyx is up next. Coming up with a fighter for him was actually a lot harder than I thought it would be. 
There's no gray or white Yoshi, so my normal snake go-to is off the table. In the end, I decided to go with white King K. Rule. It's not really that good of a choice, but it was the closest thing I could think of. It'd also be made big and harder to launch due to its rock typing. This would be on Pokemon Stadium 2's ground variant, a pretty common stage at this point, and it's an advanced spirit. Drowsy and Hypno are pretty strange Pokemon, however it was actually quite easy to come up with a fight for them. Wario and his classic overalls fit Drowsy's design perfectly. The stage's floor would be sleep-inducing since these two are known as the sleep Pokemon. Since they are also based on hypnosis, your controls would randomly be reversed and the screen would also flip randomly, which would mess with your mind of course. The stage would be Omega Magicant as it's based on a dream location. This would be advanced. Hypno would be the exact same thing except the Wario would be replaced by a yellow Luigi due to Hypno's more slender design. This would be advanced. For Krabby and Kingler, I obviously had to find a crab character to represent them. For some reason, I thought there was some sort of crab thing in the game, but I just absolutely could not put my finger on it. I googled it, and nope, I was just thinking about that time Hungrybox had a crab thrown at him. Alright, but in the end, I decided to go with the red Game & Watch who prefers throws, because if you squint hard enough, his hands kind of look like crab claws. For Krabby, this would be a hard battle and they'd all be made small. The stage is Tortimer's Island, and this is a novice. Kingler would be the same, but instead of a small horde, it'd be a single big red Game & Watch. His throws would also have increased power due to Kingler's massive claw. This is an advanced spirit. Electrode has a spirit battle, and since that's just an upside down Voltorb, I'm going to basically copy the battle over. So it'd be Pac Man and his seventh alt on Saffron City, where it'd spawn with an Electrode Pokeball, and explosives would be the only items. I also think it'd be funny if the screen occasionally flipped upside down to reference, as I said, Electrode just being an upside down Voltorb. That'd also make this one a bit more unique as well. This is a novice spirit. For Execute, I came up with two possible battles because I genuinely didn't know which one was better. They'll both take place on Tortimer's Island, and so the only difference is the fighter. You can either have six small yellow Kirby's or six small yellow Yoshi's that spam egg roll. The Kirby's look more like the Pokemon, but since Execute is the egg Pokemon, it makes sense to use the fighter that actually uses eggs. Okay, well, I thought they were eggs anyway. My Discord had a lengthy discussion about if they're either eggs or seeds. We try to use Pokedex entries to help come to a conclusion, and they literally contradict themselves even in the same generation. Thanks, Game Freak. Anyways, I think both of these fighters work, so it's up to you guys to decide which one you'd like better. Six of each are used, since that's how many eggs or seeds each execute is made up of. This would be a novice. Executor is our second and final Pokemon to only be represented by their Alolan form. Now, you may think that we would be able to mostly copy the spirit battle it has for his Alolan form to its normal form like we did for Raichu. However, Palutena is used as the fighter here. The only reason she fits is because she spams Up Smash in reference to Executor's brand new tall form, so she can't really be used for the Kanto version. So what I decided to do is make the main fighter a villager who spams Down Special to reference the tree portion of the Pokemon. He would also have three teammates, which would be the exact same as the Execute battle just at their normal size. So either three yellow Kirbys or three yellow Yoshis. Villager would also spawn with an Executor Pokeball, and this would be an advanced spirit. Cubone and Marowak are two of my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon. Guess I just really like skeletons, huh? Dry Bones for Smash. Cubone already got a spirit battle, so we only need to make one for Marowak. Wolf and his orange alt will be the fighter, and let me just say, absolutely perfect character choice. The clothes fit Marowak's normal color scheme, and since Wolf's head remains gray, it looks like the skull. To represent the bone, the wolf will spawn with the boomerang, and that'd be the only available item. The wolf's boomerang will also deal increased damage. Now, Marowak actually had a major role in the Gen 1 games, being killed by Team Rocket when protecting her son Cubone. Her ghost then haunted the tower in Lavender Town, so I would also give her the invisibility ability I gave the ghost type Pokemon we saw earlier. The stage would be Luigi's Mansion, and this would be an advanced spirit. Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan are technically part of the same evolution line ever since their pre-evolution Tyrogue was added in Gen 2, however in the original games there were entirely different Pokemon. Hitmonlee already has a battle so we only need to look at Hitmonchan. He's more focused on punching so Little Mac and his fifth all fits pretty well here. Punches will also have increased power, but that's basically just Mac's entire moveset. In order to reference how to evolve Tyrogue into Hitmonchan, Little Mac will also be harder to launch. If you didn't know, Tyrogue evolves based on which stats it has when it reaches level 20. Higher attack than defense will give you Hitmonlee, higher defense gives you Hitmonchan, on Chan, and if they're equal, you'll get him on top. Anyways, I thought this was a good opportunity to use another DLC stage, being Mishima Dojo, making this an advanced spirit. Lickitung was easy, as Greninja has a pink ult, which is meant to actually reference it. He'll spam up tilt, since that's the only move that uses his tongue. Since Lick in the Pokemon games is a 30% chance of paralyzing the opposing Pokemon, you'll randomly get stunned during the battle, as if you got hit by, say, Zero Suit Samus' neutral special. This would take place on Omega Green Greens, and would be an advanced spirit. Weezing got a spirit battle, which means we could basically copy it for its pre-evolution coughing. So this would be a small Wario and a 7th ult which prefers using down special on Pokemon Stadium, which is filled with poison gas. This is a novice. Now I'm not done here yet, as I am a bit annoyed with the Weezing spirit. Why is there only one Wario here? I mean, Weezing's main difference from coughing is that he has two heads. I don't know, it just seems kind of stupid. 
It was very surprising for me when neither Rhyhorn nor Rhydon received spirit battles, especially since it's quite well known at this point that Rhydon was the first ever Pokemon created. Well, luckily, it was pretty easy to come up with a fighter for them as a rough exterior is matched perfectly by Grey Bowser. Due to Rhyhorn's very high defense, Bowser will be very hard to launch. However, he'll also be very slow due to their abysmal speed stat. The stage will be Omega Mushroomy Kingdom, as the Desert E location is pretty similar to where you can ride Rhyhorns in Pokemon X and Y. This would be advanced. Rhydon is the same, though this time the Bowser is made big, making this an ace spirit. Tangela will always be known as the sort of oddball out of the first generation. It doesn't really fit with any of the others at all, making it probably the most forgettable Pokemon here. A blue Kirby fits Tangela pretty well. They even wear the same sort of shoes. It will occasionally heal itself in order to reference the Regenerator ability, which heals half the Pokemon's health upon switching. This will take place on Omega Yoshi's Island and would be a novice. Horsey fits as a small blue Yoshi pretty well. It would have low gravity to reference water physics and increased speed to reference swift swim. The player would also have low gravity as well. Now I decided to choose Mushroom Kingdom 2 as the stage, which may seem weird, but let me explain. Horsey's mouth looks a lot like Birdo, and this is the only stage to have Birdo on it, I think. The waterfall in the background also helps keep the water aesthetic as well. This is a novice spirit. Seedra is the exact same thing, except the Yoshi is now normally sized and the player would take occasional damage to reference its poison point ability. In the games, this ability would have the chance to give poison to a Pokemon that made physical contact with the one with this ability. These new changes make Seedra an advanced spirit. Goldeen already has one, so Seeking will basically be the exact same. A Jigglypuff in their second alt that spawns with a Goldeen Pokemon on Delfino Plaza while the player has high gravity. The only change is that the Jigglypuff is now made big, but that's not enough to make this any higher than a novice spirit. Staryu already has one, so Starmie was easy to come up with. It will use a big purple cringe to better fit Starmie's color scheme and size, and it will have increased speed to reference its high speed stat. She'll also heal herself over time to reference the natural cure ability, which removes status effects from a Pokemon upon switching out. The final special conditions are that the only items here are star-related, which are the Superstar, Launch Star, Warp Star, and Star Rod. Hopefully it's obvious why. This would take place on Tournament's Island, and it'd be an advanced spirit. Mr. Mime was pretty difficult to come up with a good fighter for. Despite being humanoid, it looks quite different from most of the fighters in Smash. In the end, I came up with three options, Villager, Sephiroth, and Pelotena. Villager looks the most like Mr. Mime, however the other two both have counters that relate to barriers in some way, and Mr. Mime is known as the barrier Pokemon. In the end though, I decided to go with Villager as the others just look too drastically different and there are other ways to reference barriers. For example, the Villager will have a permanently applied Franklin badge and a back shield, protecting it from projectiles and hits from the back. Mr. Mime is also known as the dancing Pokemon, so Villager will prefer using his Shrunk Funk Shuffle Taunt during the match. The stage would also be Battlefield Magicant, as the color scheme fits a Fairy Psychic type perfectly, and it'd be an advanced spirit. Scyther is probably my favorite bug type Pokemon out of any generation, and his fight was pretty easy to make as well. Green Ridley fits him perfectly, and he'd also have increased attack and speed, to reference Scyther's high stats in both of those fields. There would also be High Wind in this battle, to reference Scyther's flying type, and to make it more unique. Since Scyther is another Safari Zone Pokemon, the stage would be the Savannah variant of the Minecraft World stage. This is an advanced spirit. Jinx is probably my least favorite Pokemon from this generation. It's just... Um, anyway, it's for some reason an Ice-type Pokemon, so that's what we'd be leaning into for the most part. Red Zelda fits best here, as she looks like Jinx, uh, sorry to insult you Zelda fans, and she uses magic, which is in line with Jinx's psychic type. Those magic attacks will have increased power due to her high special attack stat. Now for the ice type stuff, Zelda will spawn with a Freezy, and that'll also be the only item. The stage would be Omega Summit, and the floor would freeze a player. This is an advanced spirit, though I wouldn't complain if she never got one in the future. While Electabuzz and Magma are two entirely different Pokemon, I've always associated them with one another, so the spirit battles will be pretty similar. Electabuzz will feature a big, classic Wario with the screw attack, to reference its electric typing. Speaking of, the floor will also stun the player, and the only items would be the electric ones, being the screw attack and lightning bolt. The stage would be the electric transformation of Pokemon Stadium 2, and this would be an advanced spirit. Magmar will also be a big Wario, though this time it is red overalls. Instead of a screw attack, you'll have the spicy curry applied. The floor this time would be lava, and the fire items would be the only ones available. Battlefield Brinstar Depths would be the stage, since it's the most dramatic fire location, and he'd also be an advanced spirit. While Gyarados got a battle, Magikarp shockingly didn't get one. He's always been sort of robbed in Smash in my opinion. Why does Goldeen get to be the useless fish in Smash while Magikarp is far better known for this? I decided to make Small Red Kirby the fighter here in order to mirror the Jigglypuff used in the Goldeen battle. Now as I said, Magikarp is known for being useless, as Splash is the only move the Pokemon can learn up until level 15, and in battle, it literally has no effect. So in this battle, the Kirbys will not attack you at all, and will spend the entire time trying to avoid you, as Splash in Japanese is actually referred to as Hop. Now I did say Kirby's plural, as I thought having six total Kirby's would be fun, as it'd be a reference to one of the fishermen on Route 21 that has a full team of Magikarp. He's actually the only trainer to have a full team of six in Kanto besides Blue once he becomes the champion. Now in order to give this some sort of actual challenge, this would be a timed and stamina battle, meaning if you don't KO all of them before the timer runs out, you lose. This will take place on Battlefield Congo Falls, and it'd be a novice spirit. 
Now, it took a bit of a different approach for the evolutions, as instead of finding fighters that represent the Pokemon itself, I used the fighter I felt best represented the type of each Pokemon. Vaporeon is best represented by Greninja, of course. Each of the evolutions will also spawn with the Eevee's Pokeball. Water attacks will deal more damage to reference Vaporeon's higher special attack stat than the others, and it will also take less damage from attacks to reference its high HP. This would take place on Tornomer's Island and would be an Ace Spirit. Zerosu Samus is really the only character you could argue represents an electric type. That isn't one of the electric rats, of course. ZSS would be in her yellow wall as it's the closest to Jolteon's color scheme. The other main reason I chose her is because she's one of the fastest fighters in Ultimate, placing 7th overall, and Jolteon is the fastest EV Lucian. For that reason, she will also have an increased speed on top of her already great speed. This stage would be the electric variant of the Pokemon Stadium 2 stage with a floor that stuns you. Electric items are the only ones to spawn, and she of course starts with an EV as well. This would be an ace. The final evolution from Gen 1 is Flareon, and I chose Roy in his second ult to represent it. Not only does he have a strong emphasis on fire, but his hair also kind of reminds me of Flareon. Of the evolutions, it has the highest attack stat, which was another reason Roy was chosen, as a lot of his attacks do quite a bit of knockback. He will also have increased attack power on top of that, which will make him even more scary. I decided to give him curry instead of making the floor lava, as I feel like the lava condition was used enough. This battle will take place on the Lava Transformation of Castle Siege, which I'm actually surprised we haven't used yet. He'd spawn with an EV Pokeball, and fire items are once again the only ones available. This is another Ace Spirit. Also, I do want to address something. The current EV Spirit already references the three evolutions with Red, Yellow, and Blue Yoshis. However, since their names aren't tied to the Spirit, I think it made sense for me to make each of them their own. Plus, I personally think they deserve more unique traits than what they got. <laughs> Onto our fossil Pokemon, we have the Ammonite and Kabuto line. Now, I thought it'd be fun if the first stage evolutions for these guys was a free-for-all between you, Ammonite, and Kabuto, since you do have to choose between them in the original game. Ammonite would be represented by Squirtle, since they're fairly similar to each other, and Kabuto would be the light orange Kirby that prefers to use Down Special to reference Kabuto's hard exterior. This free-for-all would take place on our old friend, the Pokemon Stadium 2 ground variant, since the Helix Fossil, the one that Ammonite can be revived from, is prominently featured in the background. These would be advanced spirits. For their evolutions, I did decide to separate the two lines, so this battle would only feature Omastar. Like Cloyster, the evolution is much more intense looking, so Blue Bowser is used here instead of Squirtle. Due to Omastar's high defense stats, Bowser will also be hard to launch. This takes place on the same stage, and would be an Ace Spirit. Now, I had a lot of trouble coming up with a good battle for Kabutops for some reason. It's just got a really unique design that was hard to find a good fighter for. I decided to go with Dark Pit in his third ult, as his weapon can be split into two to sort of resemble Kabutops' two claws. It'll also deal increased damage, and it'll be hard to launch to reference its high attack and defense stats. This will take place on the same stage, and it'd be an Ace Spirit. The final ancient Pokemon is my personal favorite, Aerodactyl. Charizard's White Alt was literally created to resemble Aerodactyl, so it's obviously the fighter we're going to use here. Due to Aerodactyl's high speed and attack stats, Charizard here will have increased speed and power. To reference its flying typing, the Charizard will jump very often and heavy wind will occur during the battle. This being another fossil Pokemon, it'll take place on the same stage as the others, and would also be an Ace Spirit. With that, we finally reached our last Pokemon line for this video, the Dratini line. With Dragonite being one of the most famous Dragon-type Pokemon, it already got a spirit. Luckily, its two pre-evolutions were really easy to make. Dratini is represented by a small, light blue Yoshi that prefers using tail attacks like Up Air, Back Air, and Down Smash. It'll also randomly heal itself to reference the Shed Skin ability. In the games, it has a 1 out of 3 chance to remove any status condition from the Pokemon every turn. Finally, this would take place on Spear Pillar to stay in line with the Dragonite battle, and it'd be a novice. Dragonair would be the exact same except the Yoshi would be normally sized, making this an advanced spirit. And that's it! Every single Gen 1 Pokemon now has a spirit What was that? Missing No would be represented by a giant tennis Alex on the Picto Chat stage. Cuckoos would be the only items to reference its bird typing. Random effects will occur during the battle, whether it be increased or decreased speed, attacks, or whatever else. Missing No will randomly become invisible and will also be made big. This is a legendary spirit. But anyways, that's it for this video. Were you all really looking forward to seeing how I do Alolan Grimer and thus hate this video now? Let me know in the comments. Despite me needing to create over 100 spirit battles for this video, I foolishly thought this would be shorter due to how many of the Pokemon are part of the same evolution line as the others. I'm not sure if I'll do other generations, but if you all like this video enough, I'll try to look into doing Gen 2 later on. There are a few other series I plan to make spirit battles like this for, so it might be a while until I get to that, but who really knows for sure. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like so I know to do more in the future. Dry Bones for Smash, and I'll See you guys next time.